This week's tip is do not treat friends and family different than you would from your everyday client. I was planning a wedding at my parents' home church that I actually grew up there. And so, of course, we had great relationships with everyone that worked at the church and they trusted me. So when the bride hired all of her own vendors that I was completely unfamiliar with, which typically is okay, I don't mind working with new people, but I do mind if they're brand new and they have no clue what they're doing. If they don't have a business license, if they don't have insurance, if they don't know the rules of the, the local church, and then they come in and they don't follow the rules even though I've sent them the guidelines and asked them to sign it, 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 it comes back on, on me as the planner and it looks bad. So in this situation, what happened, I was unfamiliar with the caterer, I was unfam unfamiliar with the florist, and the florist came in, she was not raised a specific religion, and put some flowers around the altar, which is like a big no-no. And when she was asked to take them off of the altar, she scratched the custom wooden altar that had been in that church for many, many, many years. So you can imagine how upset the priest of the church was. And then the caterer, where they had a setup, the setup area, it was carpet. And they unfortunately had spilt grease all over the carpet. And grease is not easy to clean up out of, out of carpet. So unfortunately, the bride did not get her security deposit back from the church, which of course she was upset. She felt that the caterer had, should pay for that. And guess who was in the middle of it, negotiating back and forth of who should pay for the carpet to be cleaned? Me. As the planner, we're always in the middle, making sure that we are being the liaison, communicating to each and every vendor. So again, it's so important that you don't treat friends and family different because she was a friend and I considered them like family pretty much because they went to the same church that I grew up in. I thought that it was okay to allow them to hire their own vendors without me being involved, but it really ended up being a nightmare and so much of a nightmare that the church didn't allow weddings for years after that because they were just horrified that two of the vendors didn't follow the rules. And so they've come around again, they have a new priest at that church, and they've started to do weddings again, but the actions of two vendors took away that church from other parishioners being married there for years because they were that upset. So again, just make sure that you over-communicate with vendors that you're not familiar with, or make sure that you tell the client, friend, family, or client, no matter who they are, that you really need to hire people that you trust as a planner, that you feel good about hiring, that you know that they're gonna represent you in the best way. Did you like this video? If you did, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can even leave me a comment, and if you have a wedding planning question, send it my way. If you want even more great resources to create a productive and profitable wedding planning business, plus some email updates from me that I only talk about in my email, come on over to my website, angelaprofit.com, and be sure to sign up for email updates. Thank you so much for tuning in to Productive and Profitable Wedding Planning on APTV.